So I had this dream last night. I was coaching a baseball team. It's a really tight game. They got a runner on first, and their best hitters at the plate. Someone taps me on the shoulder. I turn around, and there's Emily Dickinson. And she tells me she wants to play. Now I figure she's probably not much of a ball player. But you know, this is Emily Dickinson, and I can't figure out a way to say no to her. So I give her a glove and send her out to second base. On the next pitch, the guy on first breaks for second, and it looks like he's going to try to take out Emily. But she sidesteps him and slaps on the tag like a pro. And I remember thinking in my dream, here's this woman who spent most of her life shut up in her house, writing poems and baking bread. How'd she ever learn to play second base like that? You look at that little daguerreotype when she was 16 or 17, and you say, that way she sat in those eyes looking out at you, she was a powerful soul. My life had stood a loaded gun in corners till a day the owner passed, identified, and carried me away. And now we roam in sovereign woods, and now we hunt the doe. And every time I speak for him, the mountains straight reply. And do I smile, such cordial light, upon the valley glow? It is as a Vesuvian face had let its pleasure through. If you don't understand this poem, join the club. I must have read it hundreds of times, and I still can't figure it out. But I can't seem to get the lines out of my head. My life had stood a loaded gun. None stir the second time on whom I lay a yellow eye or an emphatic thumb. Though well, I than he, he may, may longer, longer live, live, he longer, longer must than I, I, for I have but the power to kill without the power to die. <laughs> Life and death and giants such as these are still minor apparatus hopper of the mill. She wrote 1,789 poems in all, and today, Emily Dickinson is ranked among the greatest poets of the English language. Tell all the truth, but tell it slant. Success in circuit lies. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. To make a prairie, it takes a clover and one bee, one clover and a bee and reverie. The reverie alone will do if bees are few. <laughs> <laughs> 